Hello everyone, a uh, very very good evening to all of you. Welcome to Study IQ IAS English. I'm Abhishek Singh and I welcome you all to the fifth lecture of India's Ancient Past by Arith Sharma. So as we all are aware that we are covering here the very important book of ancient history. You can see, you can see this uh, significant book is I think so much important that uh, over the past few years, Continuously, UPSC has uh, increased the emphasis on the ancient medieval and culture portion. So that's why this uh, series has been brought for all of you so that we can re-emphasize, we can re-begin uh, the things that we had not covered for past few years. So let us start this lecture today and today's topic is going to be a very important topic that is the Neolithic Revolution. Why am I calling it as a Neolithic Revolution? In fact, this is not my statement. This is the statement given by a very famous historian, Gordon Child. So, Gordon Child had said that the inventions or the changes which were occurred, which occurred in the Neolithic period, were no less than a revolution. That mighty revolution which completely changed the way in which the early human beings used to live. All right, everybody. So, we will see in this lecture that what were those changes brought during the Neolithic period? Where were the major settlements of Neolithic age located in India? What were their significant features? And several other important points will be covered in this lecture. So, good evening, Muhammad Noor Bakht, Abhishek Kapoor. Good evening, uh, Sarvendra Yadav. Guys, before we could proceed further in this lecture, kindly share this lecture with all of your friends in whichever social media you are having your colleagues, friends or uh, you know people who are preparing along with you, you can share this video with all of them. This will be very, very useful for everybody who is going to watch it. So let us start the lecture without any further delay. But before uh, proceeding further, let me tell you one thing that we are uh, starting a P2I that is prelims to interview batch for all the students who are aspiring to appear for 2024 civil services examination. And this batch will be having very considerable and significant advantages for the candidates. For example, the comprehensive coverage of the GS syllabus, mains residential program will be there and the comprehensive guidance for interview will also be provided. This batch will be available in three different medium, bilingual, pure English and pure Hindi. And the original cost of the batch is rupees 70,000. However, if you are using this code ASR live, and let me tell you that this code does give you a you know extremely advantageous position because you are going to get this course at rupees 29,999 only given that you are using this code. So let us proceed further and let us understand the first thing about Neolithic age and what is the first thing that we are going to learn about Neolithic age that is Neolithic culture, their locations in India. All right. Have a look on this map particularly and you will realize one thing that Neolithic culture that was primarily present in the northwestern corridors, that was present in the northeastern corridors and that was present in the southern corridors, okay, southern India. So, first of all, you need to understand that why in these places, why not here in the Gangetic Plains except a few locations which were in the, in the hilly areas, okay, hilly areas of Vindhya. Apart from that, you do not find any significant place containing the evidences of Neolithic age anywhere in the plains anywhere in the river valleys. Why is it so? Who can answer this question in the uh, audience? So guys, let me tell you a very significant reason that Neolithic culture, it was a little different from a little different from its predecessing cultures. For example, Neolithic culture is primarily identified with two important features. The first one that is the habit of the human beings changed from changed from the hunter and gatherer to food producer, okay, food producer 
and second important thing that they were right they were trying to they were trying to involve more and more more and more into adventing out to the different places a little bit a little bit uh, uh, those areas where agriculture was possible so that is why first thing that they became the food producers and second thing that they started the social the social life okay so food production and beginning of society the food production and beginning of society from becoming a nomadic people becoming a group of uh, you know the vagabonds they converted into the group of civilized now i will not say civilized but group of stable society at least in some places so was it difficult to was it difficult to settle in this area definitely it was difficult why so obviously the presence of huge rivers and huge river plains were not conductive were not conducive to the needs of the early men in the neolithic period they needed the soil they needed the plains but in a very small scale so that is why they chose such areas which were which were having the smaller plains smaller plains nearby nearby the hilly areas nearby the hilly areas so that they would have the availability of both the stones as well as the soil okay everybody so i hope that all of you got the clear understanding that why are the locations of neolithic period restricted to a few geographical corners or few geographical cordons of india okay everyone now let us understand further the neolithic settlements in india as we discussed that these sites are highly varying in their antiquity for example if we talk about the antiquity of the neolithic sites that how much old are they so the sites which are present in the southern india they are not older than 2500 bce however some latest excavations in the district of madurai in tamil nadu or nalgonda region in andhra pradesh okay in uh, andhra pradesh telangana that region so nalgonda and madurai these places have resulted into the excavation of new sites which belong to the neolithic period but their antiquity is their antiquity is as old as 2000 bce up to 6000 bce okay 2000 to 6000 bce so this indicates that even though rs sharma clearly tells us that in southern india hardly any places are there which are older than 2500 bce that means they are not older than 4500 from now onwards but in the latest excavations as per the official reports of the government of tamil nadu and government of india both there are the places excavated in tamil nadu recently in 2018 as well as in 2022 23 as well that carry the antiquity of the neolithic sites much older than the given time period in rs sharma and apart from that if we talk about the locations of the neolithic period in the northern india particularly in the northward side of the vindhya ranges as you can see this map here in the northward side of the vindhya ranges vindhya ranges are you know vindhya ranges are present uh, here this is the location of vindhya ranges okay so in the northward side of the vindhya ranges whichever neolithic sites are present those neolithic sites they are older than 5000 bce that means at least 7000 years old sites are found in the northern india which include the primary locations of northwestern parts of our country okay everybody so i hope you got the clear idea about the antiquity of the sites that how much old are they now if i'm talking about the features okay so the people of the neolithic age they used the polished stone tools however the stone tools were not the only thing that they were using because they were using the composite stone tools which also included the bone tools as well as the stone tools 
okay so use of the bone tools and stone tools that is primarily evident in almost every major location of the neolithic site apart from that if we look upon the stone tools the type and character of the stone tools on the basis of the character of the stone tools these places they could be divided into three distinct parts or three distinct uh, regions every region had their own specific stone tool that was an ax ax was the most primary tool that they were using and in the northwestern type the curved cutting edges right the curved cutting edges they were the feature right they were the features of the stone tools <clears throat> all right everyone if i'm talking about the curved cutting edges all right or in the northeastern side that means in the meghalaya in the garo hills region the type of the type of ax which was used there that was rectangular butt and shouldered hose okay and in the southern india oval sides and pointed butt now what is the meaning and what is the significance of this information now let me tell you one thing that if you are able to see this picture you can clearly understand one thing that here in case if you are able to see this thing you can clearly understand this is having a pointed particularly a pointed hose and it is having a straight edge straight cutting edge after that this is this is having right probably a curved cutting edge this is also having a curved cutting edge but somehow this is this is a little bit blunt it shows that it was probably it was probably going to have going to have a point okay so these were the different types of the axes which were recovered from the different parts of the country in fact if i am going to tell you the exact diagrams here so curved cutting edges okay curved cutting edges something like that then rectangular butt and uh, shouldered hose that means this is type of this is type of uh, the axe that was used in the axe that was used in the northeastern and southern oval sides with pointed but so basically pointed but oval side okay so this was the type of the tool axe that was used in southern india you can clearly understand with the example that if you are going to suppose relate the axe of parashuram you can see that parashuram was considered to be a very famous axe wielding god and the settlement site the location from where parashuram belonged to or parashuram lived he used to live in the mahendragiri right on the mountain called mahendragiri not the mahendragiri of odisha but the mahendragiri of kerala region it is believed in the Keralaite folk tales if you anybody among you is from Kerala you might relate to this if uh, your you know grandparents and elderly of the house they might have discussed sometimes with you about the folk stories so it was believed that this land of Kerala it originated because Lord Parashuram had no place to reside once he had pledged to donate the entire earth to his guru so that's one that's when he threw his threw his axe into the ocean and the land up to which the axe went that land emerged from the ocean and it was called it was called as the kerala because it had a lot of coconuts etc so that is basically the mythological story that's basically a mythological story this might be a folk tale also but it indicates the significance of the axe wielding warriors living in that area and using this particular type of x this particular type of x got it everyone so neolithic settlements in india they are classified on the basis of the speciality or the features of their settlements particularly the types of the tools and now if we move further if we move further and let us understand about the important neolithic settlements in india so first of all we will talk about the neolithic settlements in the northern india and the most important site that is present in jammu and kashmir and that site is burj home upsc has continuously asked the questions in the prelims examination 
and they have asked the questions in prelims examination in 2011, 2014, 2015, right? So, in fact, in the last two or three years, they have not asked the question from this particular topic. However, we may never know that UPSC can ask the question from which topic. So, it's very much uh, advisable to all of you that why not we should prepare the topic which have already given a few questions in last 5 to 10 years. Okay, everyone. So, talking about Burj home, where is it located? It is located in Jammu and Kashmir. And why is it a famous Neolithic site? Because it has got several features which are unique to this place. For example, there is the complete absence of the microlithic tools. What does that mean? That means that as I told you in the very beginning itself that usually the Mesolithic people, they used to live in such areas where they could easily obtain such stones which were easier to work with. They were hard but at the same time they were easy to make into the smaller tools. However, if you see this place Burj home, this is located near Srinagar and that is where that is where we see that the availability of the such stones which were helpful in making microlithic tools that was not there. This is why there is complete absence of the microlith. So when there is the absence of microlithic tools, definitely there will be something which would be hard enough to make the tools. And what was that? That was the bone. Obviously, this area was quite rich in the in the flora and fauna and due to the availability of animals of in a large number, the availability of bones that was advantageous to the people living in the Burj home area. Isn't it? And how many of you have seen particularly the animals which are climbing in the hilly areas, their stock bones, particularly their femur or their uh, you know, feet bones, they are very, very strong. And that's why the bone tools were quite stable. Despite being an organic substance, they were more prone to dissolution or more prone to, you know, uh, decomposition when they were buried under the ground for so many years, in fact, thousands of years. Still, we have obtained the, uh, the bone tools which were used by the people living at Burj home. Apart from the bone tools, what was the other feature that was uh, special about people of Burj home? They used to, they used to live in the pit dwellings. What is the meaning of pit dwelling? The pit dwelling indicates, the pit dwelling indicates that uh, in the ground, right, in the ground uh, pit, they used to create, right, they used to create the pits in the ground, right, and that was used as the eventual right as the eventual shelter for them when they were when they were free from their work outside so they used to now descend down in this pit and they used to live here for their safety this pit was also useful looking at the looking at the climatic conditions of climatic conditions of uh, jammu and kashmir as it used to be extremely cold, extremely cold and therefore it was much warmer, right, much warmer than the external house, right, than the external houses. And as we all are aware, also there was, there was no available technology, right, no available technology which enabled them the construction of house, okay, for construction of, construction of the stone houses, okay, everyone. So, they were not having any such technology which taught them how to construct the stone houses because in Jammu and Kashmir region or in any, any hilly area, naturally you will have the stones, but they will be, they will be the blocks of the stone, boulder stones, which are very difficult to work with. And these people, since they were the early people and they had no such technology to construct the houses, so therefore they found it easier to dig a hole in the ground and then 
live in that pit so that it would be safe from the harsh weather conditions, from the presence of uh, wild animals. Also, it will provide them the feeling of a close knit bond in their familial uh, existence. So, I hope you got the understanding that why were they preferring the pit dwelling rather than anything else. Okay, everybody. Now, if I'm talking about another few important feature like the presence of the ceramics that was also, uh, you know, found from the Burr's home. So, presence of ceramics, what does indicate? As you all might be aware that the Himalayas, as we move towards the higher region and look at the geological composition of the Himalayan rocks, then we can have the idea that Himalayan rocks are not just sedimentary, but if we talk about the greater Himalayas, the greater Himalayas, they also have the presence of, they also have the presence of the metamorphic rocks, okay. And the ceramics, the ceramics, they were usually derived from such metamorphic rocks found in the higher Himalayan regions or the, or the greater Himalayan regions and that is the unique feature which is, uh, you know, absent in any other Neolithic site of India, that is the presence of the ceramics. Now, if I'm talking about the other, you know, important feature that is the practice of agriculture, okay. So, what is the meaning of this practice of agriculture? Was it not done anywhere else? Obviously, it was done. But if I'm talking about the practice of agriculture at Burj home, then this becomes special. And why so? Because Burj home was, it was located in a, you know, in a valley, not in the plain, not in the, you know, fertile river plain or something. It was located in the valley of Kashmir, which means it had to, it had to adjust with the harsh climatic conditions, which means that agriculture by the time of the Burj home settlement, that was quite well developed. Only because of that, the residents of Burj home were able to cultivate the crops despite the weather conditions were unfavorable. Alright, so that is why this is a very special feature and animal husbandry was always there. Use of the coarse grey pottery. So, pottery that was also found in the Burj home region. Which colored pottery? Grey color pottery. Which, uh, what was the level of refinement? Was it a refined pottery? Was it a well, uh, you know, great quality of pottery? No. It was a coarse pottery. That means it was not very finely made, but definitely it was used. Definitely it was made. Okay. Most probably it was a handmade pottery that was obtained from there. Then the burial of the domestic dogs with their masters. Now, this is something very, very unique. In fact, the sites of Burj home and the Gufkaral, okay, Gufkaral. Both the sites are found in Jammu and Kashmir region and this Burj home particularly has a very special feature that the pets, especially dogs, they were buried along with the dead body of their masters, which might indicate that their belief, right, their belief was probably in the life after death or it also may indicate that they were not aware about the actual meaning and concept of the death so that they used to think that probably this person who is dead might be uh, needing this pet after his death also okay so these were some these were some uh, you can say conclusions from the uh, features of burj home as a particular neolithic site now if i'm talking about uh, another few sites right <coughs> you can see this particular uh, image as well you can see this particular image as well that is obtained from the Burj home. These are the stone tools. Okay, these are the stone tools as I told you that the presence of the stone in that area is usually of the heavier and la right larger stones. So that's why microlithic tools are not possible to make. These are larger tools. Okay, everyone. Now, another site with a similar feature, right, the presence of bone tools that is Chirand in Patna, in fact, nearby Patna in Bihar. And there, the use of the antler, use of the antler bones or sorry, antler horns that is found. What is the antler? Basically, the horns of the stag, horns of the stag or any other antelopes which have the horns. Okay. 
So if we talk about the other places, so here, the number of the Neolithic tools and settlements have been found in the Garo Hills, in the uh, Vindhya Ranges and in the Kaimur area. So which are the locations present in the Garo Hills? Very important to note it down because Northeast India has been in the news recently and also there was a, a discovery of few places. There was a discovery of a few new places related to the Neolithic sites in the Meghalaya only. So that's why you may expect a question in your prelims examination. So the places like the Chibragri, the places like Bhatbari and Rongram in the West Garo district, they are some of the famous locations related to the Neolithic age in Meghalaya. Apart from that, Koldihwa and Mahgar near Prayagraj in Uttar Pradesh. So they are the famous locations in the Uttar Pradesh, particularly the Vindhya region. If I'm talking about uh, a few more places in the Vindhya region, you can also uh, enlist the Belan Valley in such area, in such list. Okay. And in fact, the Neolithic sites have also been recovered from the uh, Plateau region of Bundelkhand particularly, right? But those are still under excavation and therefore they are not the part of any books here. If I'm talking about uh, the places in Kaimur range, so you can see the Rohtas district of Bihar that has got, Rohtas region of Bihar has got a place called Senuar and in Bodh Gaya, nearby Bodh Gaya, there is a place called Taradi. Okay, Taradi. So Tardi and right Taradi and Senwar are two places in Bihar region. Okay, right Bihar region means Bihar, Jharkhand, Kaimur. That entire area, the entire western part of Bihar, Jharkhand is Kaimur region. The eastern part of Bihar, Jharkhand that is Chhota Nagpur region. Okay, southern Bihar and eastern Jharkhand. Now, if I am talking about the Neolithic settlements in southern India, so we have understood about the Neolithic settlements which are present in the northern India. Now let us understand one by one about the Neolithic sites present in the southern India. Okay, everybody. So, southern India, as far as the historical places are concerned, that is more significant in the UPSC examination because usually UPSC tries to balance out, right, tries to balance out the uh, historicity of the northern and southern India. It is obviously observed that uh, most of the people they focus more on the history of the northern Indian parts, but UPSC likes to maintain a balance. This is why the southern Indian places have been a constant favorite of UPSC regarding the locational, locational questions where a particular location is given and we have to make a match. For example, probably in 2014 or 15, there was a question where a few sites were given and we had to make the correct matching of those sites. In fact, in 2000, uh, uh, probably 18 also, there was a question, there was a question uh, in which one of the places in Karnataka, one of the places in Uttar Pradesh, you know, all these were given and out of four different places, three different places were from the, from the southern India. So, if we observe the question paper carefully, we can find uh, we can find the nature of such questions are quite common. So, <laughs> South India has the largest number of the Neolithic sites due to the easy availability of the stones. That's a very common thing everybody can understand that Southern India has got a very large presence of the stones due to being uh, due to the uh, plateau regions. That's why maximum number of the Neolithic sites are found in Southern India. However, the features of the features of the Neolithic places in southern India are quite similar. That is the use of the axis made of the stones and the blades made of the stones. So if we talk about the use of fire baked earthen pots, so that is something special in southern India which was absent in the Burj home or absent in the Meghalaya region. Which means we can say that probably the earliest fire baked earliest fire baked pottery in the Neolithic culture, they can be obtained from the southern Indian places. If we see, they had the remains of the dairy products. So the uh, discovered uh, potteries, they had the remains of the dairy products, most probably they had the milk solids found in that pottery. What does this indicate? This indicates the use of the cattles 
use of the cattle for the milk produce. Okay, so this is a very very important feature that use of the cattle, use of the cattle for the milk products. Now that was something which was absent in the earlier Neolithic periods, but here this is found in the southern India. Apart from that, there were the querns which indicate the cereal production. Querns, what is the meaning of quern? You might have heard the word called chakki, right now. So the querns which were found, they indicate that there was the grinding of the corns, okay. The grinding of, for grinding the grinding the millet corn okay millet corn so this grinding of the millet corn that indicated that production was quite ample quite ample in these areas or they had probably also invented the you know use of the corn floors or the use of the grain floors probably in making chapatis or something so we can say that these type of food habits they existed in the southern India. Now UPSC can ask a question that consider the following statements. For example, the nature of question that they can ask here, uh, something like that. Okay, consider the following statements. Just a second. Consider the following statements. Statement number one: the Neolithic settlements, the Neolithic settlements in India were, right, were aware about, aware about the use of, use of manures, okay, manures. Second statement, they produced the grains like millets, barley, etc. And third, dairy products, dairy products along with along with grains formed their formed their staple staple diets okay so you have to choose that how many statements okay how many statements of yeah how many statements Among these, among these are correct. Okay. So, first option A says that only one statement is correct. Option B says that only two statements are correct. Option C says that only three statements are correct or all the statements, right? All the statements are correct. And option D that says none, right, none of the statements are correct. So, which is the answer that you are going to choose? You can tell me your answer in the comment box. And if you are not watching it live, but whenever you will be watching it, you can tell your answer in the comment box. Okay. Now, I will not tell you the answer here. I will be telling you the answer in the next session, right, in the next part of this lecture. So, when we will be uh, studying about Chalcolithic and Bronze Age culture, particularly the Harappan civilization that will be starting in the lecture of Monday. So, in that lecture, before starting this, I will be discussing this question, that's for sure. Okay, now, coming back to the point once again. So, here, the cow pens made of the post and stakes at Pickley Hall, they proved the use of the dung manures. Okay, everyone. So, try to understand that there were the cow pens. What is the meaning of cow pens? That looks something like that, okay? Something like that where either the stone or the, you know, uh, wooden blocks are used to make the cow pens. And here, usually the cow dung was collected, okay? Cow dung was collected and the cow dung 
that was collected, it was later on used as a manure, used as a manure. So they were aware about the use of manure also. Ash mounds and habitation sites indicate the transferring of settlements, which indicates that they used to transfer from one location to the other location. They used to transfer their settlements from one to other, which means despite not practicing the jhum cultivation or shifting cultivation, they were still practicing the shifting pattern of their settlements, which indicates that they were still not civilized completely, still not settled completely at one location. Okay, everyone. So, such type of statements or such meaning of any statement that shall be correct in the question of UPSC. Now, if I am talking about uh, a few more features of the Neolithic sites in southern India. So, guys, there are more than 850 settlements, right, which are found in the southern India. Some of the famous ones, they are Uttur, right, sorry, Utunur in Andhra Pradesh. All right, then uh, the places such as Nalgonda in Telangana and the poor, right, the Pavural Gutta in Telangana. Then in Kerala, we have the Adakal Caves in Vainad. Guys, Adakal Caves are also famous for, okay, famous for the rock, oh, sorry, famous for the cave paintings, cave paintings. Okay, so Neolithic cave paintings are found in Kerala. Remember that statement. This could be your next question in the UPSC where they will be uh, right, giving you three statements, four statements. Out of that one statement will be Neolithic rock paintings or Neolithic cave paintings are absent in southern India. And that statement will become wrong. Why? Because they are found, Neolithic cave paintings are found in Kerala. Then in Tamil Nadu, the places like Payampalli and the places like uh, the Varathanpalli and Baragur and also the Thirumangalam. So all these places are famous Neolithic sites. This Thirumangalam, it is located in Madurai district and it was recently, recently discovered, okay. And at the same time being recently discovered, this is the oldest oldest site of Neolithic culture, Neolithic culture in the southern India, in the southern India and it goes as far as up to 6000 BC old, okay. In Karnataka, we have so many places, particularly Maski, Brahmagiri, Hallur, then Kodakal and uh, Sangan Hallu and uh, Piklihal and Takkal Kota, all these are the places which are related to the Neolithic settlements in Karnataka. So I hope that you all got this idea very clearly. All right, everyone. Now, if I'm talking about the other features, so let me just make it very clear to all of you that Neolithic settlers, they had the great knowledge about farming and particularly the farming of the cereals. Cereals means the food grains. Cereals means the food grains. All right, everyone. So here, the Neolithic settlers were the earliest farming communities. Remember this line, I'm just doing it underlined because this is very, very important. Earliest farming communities, they broke the ground with the stone hose and digging sticks. How were they cultivating the food grains? They were using the digging sticks and a stone hose. Okay, stone hose. In end of which the ring stones were weighing on the one half of a kilogram to fix. Besides the polished stone tools of the stone, they used microlithic blades. All right, everyone. So usually, usually they utilize the different stone tool technologies to, right, to do the cultivation. Yes, Abhishek, chat of everybody is visible. Everybody's chat is visible. All right. So I think those all who has given the answer, Sarvendra Yadav and Abhishek Kapoor, and uh, apart from that, I think uh, nobody has given the answer. Guys, try to give the answer whenever there is a question in the question in the class. Okay. Now, if I'm talking about their uh, living, so they lived in the circular or the rectangular houses made up of the mud and reed. So their living was in the circular or rectangular houses. In general, we are talking about. We are not talking about particular place in general. Apart from that, the 
primitive people lived in the circular houses they owned property in the common so what is the meaning of this the common okay common or joint joint holdings of holdings of land that was a feature that was a feature then in any case these neolithic people led a settled life and produced ragi and kulati that means chana or horse gram they also produced rice so these are important terms Rem right remember that good evening srcc very good evening the neolithic people of mehargarh they were more advanced they produced wheat and barley and lived in the mud brick houses now remember one thing if i am talking any time that people of the mehargarh were more advanced how many of you can tell me the reason the reason is uh, geographical let me tell you the reason lies in geography how many of you can the exact reason that why was it so that mehargarh and the nearby areas were doing everything earlier than the rest of the parts of our country what was the reason behind that try to tell that reason in the comment box and let me give you a small hint that the reason the answer is in geography in the geography okay during the neolithic phase several settlements became antic right acquainted with the cultivation of cereals and domestication of animals so they needed the pots in which they could store their food grains and also the pots for cooking eating and drinking so this is why pottery first appears in this phase which was the handmade pottery in initially but later on the people used the foot wheels to make the potteries so that the potter's wheel came to balochistan from western asia and spread it across the subcontinent got it everyone so usually we can say that the use of pottery became common in this time period the cultivation of cereals became common in this time period domestication of the animals spread it everywhere in this time period at the same time the use of cooking food in this time period that started the use of the grinding the use of the grinding that is that is started in this time period so so many changes in the way of human life in the way of the living of the human beings so many changes were introduced in the neolithic time period and this is why this is why the neolithic time period is often termed as often called as the neolithic revolution neolithic revolution now i asked a question to all of you that uh, what was the reason that the reason that the balochistan area particularly mehargarh it saw the development earlier than the rest of the parts of the country the answer lies in geography i had given the hint let me tell you the pattern of let me tell you the pattern of uh, rainfall and soil which is present in the balochistan region at present that is very dry arid climate less rainfall however in that area in that area if i talk about the weather conditions 4 5 6 7000 years 8000 9000 years ago there must have been the better rainfall there must have been uh, the presence of good and moisture soil as well as the presence of uh, sufficient vegetation to retain that moisture so something very similar to the present day to the present day western uttar pradesh or haryana or the parts of malwa region in madhya pradesh something very similar these areas also they don't have uh, extremely dense forest they don't have uh, extremely uh, you know well irrigated and drenched areas from the river but they have good soil decent moisture and decent rainfall and that is extremely suitable for the civilizational development and the similar type of climate might have existed in the times when we are talking about mehargarh in the neolithic period okay everyone so that is the probable reason now let us understand about the progress and the limitations of the neolithic sites as the neolithic sites were quite developed as compared to the previous parts of the stone age however there were certain limitations and certain progresses progresses were quite many like remarkable technologies right they were invented particularly some of them came from western asia such as cultivation weaving 
पॉट मेकिंग हाउस कंस्ट्रक्शन स्टॉक रेजिंग मीन्स द एनिमल हजबेंड्री ओके एनिमल हजबेंड्री साउथ एशिया ऑल्सो सॉरी साउथ एशिया ऑल्सो रिसीव द आर्ट ऑफ राइटिंग फ्रॉम द वेस्टर्न एशिया दिस इज क्लेम्ड बाई मेनी हिस्टोरियंस इंक्लूडिंग आर एस शर्मा ऑल्सो ओके गुड इवनिंग मुकुंद वेरी गुड इवनिंग यस सर्वेंद्र एब्सोल्युटली दैट्स वेरी गुड आंसर सर्वेंद्र एब्सोल्युटली सो हियर इफ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट राइट इफ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दीज टेक्नोलॉजिकल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन फ्रॉम द वेस्टर्न एशिया let me tell you that there are different claims by the present historians who try to debunk try to decline or deny these conclusions made by rs sharma they try to say that pot making that was already present in uh, india as well because the places like langhnaj in gujarat are right and the places like sarai nahar rai in uttar pradesh they have the evidences of the pottery but these places belonged to the mesolithic period right so that's why it is claimed by some other historians that okay that this is the time that they had discovered yes house construction definitely came from western asia cultivation also it was believed that it was believed that the people living in the areas of anatolia in the western asia or the asia minor the part of turkey that is in asia that was the region from where the cultivation had initiated but as we all are aware that as per the latest historical researches this has been proven this has been proven that the places in uttar pradesh such as koldihwa such as lahura deva these places in uttar pradesh have much more uh, ancient evidences of the agriculture as compared to any place in anatolia or in other parts of the western asia not just that dependency on the hunting fishing and food gathering was considerably reduced why so because they used the indian neolithic residents they used the stone celts as the tilling tools and plows diggers seed sowers etc to cultivate to cultivate the uh, to cultivate the uh, different crops however there were certain limitations also because their dependency you know limitations the biggest limitation that was that they were dependent on the stone tools which could not allow them to move away from the hilly areas to move away from the hilly areas in fact they were unable to move away even in those areas where they tried to move they could not move beyond a few kilometers because of the lack of availability of options at the same time they were unable to produce the surplus foods or surplus grains why because their technology which they were using for the cultivation of crops that was very primitive in the nature very primitive in the nature and this led to uh, their dependency not just on the cereals but also on the hunting fishing etc i told you that these things reduced considerably but they did not end completely okay in fact in such areas which were located in the hilly terrains or the valleys where the fertility of soil was questionable in those areas you can still find the tendency of you know meat eating that was or uh, you know hunting etc that was much more much more than the areas which developed later on okay then their economy remained stuck to the subsistence level until until the new factor of change was introduced so this is a very very important point that until and unless there will be a new factor of change right there will be a new factor of change until and unless there will be a new factor of change there will not be any significant growth in the standards of the neolithic age and what will be the new factor of change dear students what can be that that can be the use of metals use of metals so now we are going to start in the next lecture that the use of metals how did it impact the human culture civilization and the growth what was exactly the reason behind the growth of civilization and so many other features related to the civilizational growth and cultural development in the ancient india so stay tuned with us and we will be meeting on monday 
at the same time that is 4 pm and i hope that all of you are very much interested in uh, pursuing your upsc preparations further and if you are thinking so this is the best time to get yourself enrolled because one thing that i can guarantee to all of you on this platform you are going to get some serious studies some serious help in the preparations not like that you are not going to get uh, you know uh, something outrageous but definitely which is very very important for the examination and for that we have started our prelims to interview guidance program and in which we are offering the batches in the bilingual hindi and english media and you can opt any of these batches as per your convenience and this will be giving you the comprehensive preparation for the gs current affairs the books from the study iq publication will be delivered to you at the same time you will be called if you qualify the prelims examination you will be called to the study iq campus in delhi ncr and here you will be provided the residential guidance program the mains residential program and we will also guide you for the interview so you have all these things including the residence including the library and everything in the same program you have all these in rupees 29999 what do you have to do you just use the code asr live you can follow the link given in the description box or you can directly download the application you can uh, simply choose the course of your choice and you can utilize this code and you can simply enroll so that's all from my side thank you so much guys thanks a lot for watching it let's meet in the next session and the next session will be on monday okay monday 4 pm till then everybody please keep studying please keep revising it you can see uh, the entire playlist is there on the youtube channel of study iq ias english you can see the uh, watch the previous lectures also if you have not watched it yet so thanks a lot for watching it guys take care bye bye and have a great day jai hind thank you